Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to our Adventurer's Tome Guide. This is the third and final part in our coverage of the Eastern Lutera continent. Now, this is a massive continent, and it was just far too large to complete in one single video without making it overly long. So we've broken it up into three parts. If this is your first time discovering this guide, make sure you check the links in the description down below for the first two parts. You're gonna wanna start there. But for those of you who have been following along, Let's jump right into it. Okay, starting from the bottom half of the Croconus Seashore down here. I'm gonna circle around right here. There's gonna be one Moco Seed to grab. There it is right there. And mount back up. And we're gonna head around up into this next section over here. This is one of the possible locations that bird can spawn right here. That's uh, the second Wandering Merchant. And the next Moco Seed is right here, right behind these barrels. Counting back up, we've got Vista number 10 up here. And there it is right there. Okay, and mounted back up, there's going to be another few Mococo Seeds to grab. We do have to walk this, unfortunately, since there are no triports. Next one's right here. And mounting back up, we can continue on. Next Seed is right here, hidden behind all of these trees. And down a little further ways, we'll find ourselves another Makoko Seed. That's right here. Continuing on now, we can take a quick detour down this cliff. And we can move on up over this way. Right around here is our next Moko. Okay, and we're finally done traveling. We can triport up to the garden campment now. Okay, from the garden campment, we're going to head just outside of it and look for elite monster number 15. And there he is right there. Okay, we can mount back up and run through the encampment out the other side. There's going to be two more Makoko seeds over here up a cliff ledge. You can climb up these vines right here. Notice they're not marked with that standard golden icon. But if we get close to them, we will get the activation button. And there's the next Makoko seed right here. And the second one up here is behind this tall grass. Okay, with that out of the way, we can head back down the cliff, mount up, and continue on. And the next Moco Seed is up here. Mounting back up now, we can head into this area. There's two Moco Seeds behind a barricade. You just have to break this down. And that's the easy way to do it. Heading in here, we grab the first Moco Seed. And then back and around for a second seed in here, and then we're done with this section as well. And there it is right there. All right, with that out of the way, we're going to triport back to the guard encampment. And we're going to head out one more time. We're going to go all the way east this time. Unfortunately, we only have to get one Moco seed out here. So if all you're looking for are the Adventurer's Tome objectives, you can skip forward like 30 seconds and you should be at the next portion that you need for the Adventurer's Tome. That's going to be cooking collectibles. Uh, there's going to be two, actually, for part four. And there's the Makoko seed right here. All right, and triport back to the guard encampment now. And we are almost done with the southern portion of Krokona's seashore. We're going to head out of the encampment once again, the same way we just came. But this time, we're going to head up north, moving towards that upper section of the seashore gonna be one Makoko seed up here then we'll get to the cooking ingredient number four all right and there's the seed right there and mount back up we're gonna head down and around this way so the first item we're looking for is right here and a little further up ahead we'll find the second part of cooking item number four there it is right there Okay, mounting up now, there's one Makoko seed to get, and then we can triport over to the main section of this upper portion. And there it is right there. All right, with that out of the way, go on ahead and triport to the Black Fox assembly area. All right, a bunch of things tightly packed in this area. Go on ahead and mount up, and we're going to head up and over to the western portion of this section. Going to circle all the way down and around. We're going to find Vista number nine down here. There it is right there. And then we head back out of this little dead end and over to the west a bit. We're going to jump across this broken walkway. And there's going to be Vista number 8 over here. There it is right there. Okay, and head back now. Going to head up into another little section up here. There's going to be two more Makoko seeds. 
And that's going to be it for this section of the Adventurer's Tome. Uh, all that's left now are four more Makoko Seeds. If you don't care about those, feel free to skip on ahead to the Lutera Castle section. But if you do, we're just going to jump over all of these bridges right here. There's another Makoko Seed right there. And we're going to keep going on to the end. And one more jump, and there's the last Makoko Seed of this part right here. And we're going to triport back to the Black Fox assembly area one last time. There's going to be two more seeds to grab. Mount back up and head up north just a little ways. Got to head up into this top section right here. There it is hidden in the bushes. And headed down this way now. We're going to circle around and continue heading on up north. And there's the final Moco seed right here. Okay, and with that out of the way, we can head to Lutera Castle to get the final pieces of the Adventurer's Tome. Okay, so starting off in Lutera Castle now, we're going to mount up and head out this way over here. Right up here past these two little squires practicing, right on the ground, you're going to find cooking item number one. And we're going to mount back up and head all the way up into the corner here. There's going to be one Makoko seed. And here it is, right here, among all these spectators. Alright, from there we can triport back to the palace entrance. And we can mount up again and head down this way this time. I head up the stairs and into this building right here. And inside the chapel, go on past all the pews and head to the left over here, up against the wall. You can actually walk right through it, and there's just nothing. You're just walking in blank space. It's like one of those old secrets in a Super Nintendo game or something. As you can see, the green leaves are perfectly visible, so you know what you're trying to get to. And just keep clicking until your character automatically walks to it. And with that, you're all set. You can triport back or walk on out. We're actually going to be going south of the chapel, so I'm just going to walk it. I'm not sure which way is technically faster. And mounting up now, we do need to head into the basement. And we can mount up again, actually. Head past the demon all the way to the end of this section. And there's a hidden Makoko seed behind this pillar right here. Okay, from there we can head back to this triport. And we're going to mount up again and head inside of the castle this time. Alright, so first up there's going to be another secret area off of the map with three Makoko seeds right through this door. Walk right through. There's Moko seed one. Moko two. And the third one is all the way down here. Okay, heading back now. Before heading up to check on the king, we're going to head on over here. Hidden story number two is up here. Investigate behind this bookshelf. Okay, and with hidden story number two out of the way, we can head down to Naria's Tavern Triport. And from there, we're just going to mount up and circle around here. There's going to be a few more Makoko seeds to grab. There's one right there. There's going to be one more further down on the bridge on the exit out of the castle. And once we've grabbed those, we can move on to finishing up this continent. And there's the second to last Makoko seed right there. Okay, we can triport back to Naria's Tavern once again. And we're going to mount up and head into the cooking area this time. And there is the final Makoko seed right here. There's going to be a few cooking items you have to grab. Uh, first, we're going to talk to the food merchant right here. Make sure to pick up that sirloin steak for 1500 And go to this merchant right here. Head to the ingredients tab and pick up that foundation centennial wine. A few more things to buy. I'm going to head up to this cooking ingredient merchant. And now we have to pick up two things. We're going to pick up the Lutheran courtesies. You also want to shift click on this one to buy in bulk. We're going to buy 100 breadcrumbs to start out. And I'll explain why in just a moment. Hopefully that's enough. But for now, we're going to head inside to talk to the cook and have him craft everything for us. So we're going to just go on ahead and craft all four of these. Okay, and we're now set to start using some of these cooking ingredients. However, be exceedingly careful right here, this melting gelato. Set it to the side. You want to make sure it's somewhere where you're not going to accidentally touch it. We do not want to use it. Once again, as you can see, it has a little clock icon next to it and a duration of four minutes left. We need to let it sit for a total of five minutes for that gelato to melt and for this to become the cooking ingredient that we need, the fully melted legendary gelato. Go on ahead and use all the other ingredients. We'll get to the breadcrumbs right now, so set those aside. Now what we're gonna have to do is use as many of these breadcrumbs as possible. You can just alt right click 
and in stacks of 30, you can use them all. Every time you use them, there is a chance that it gets upgraded to another further item. We need to use enough breadcrumbs that it gets upgraded a total of four times. So you can see here, we made two donut servants. Uh, we're gonna use them all. Let's see how this goes. I'm thinking even 100 breadcrumbs may not actually be enough. We may have to buy 1,000. And we use one donut servant. It's already upgraded to the donut butler. We can keep going. We need a nut, uh, we need a total of two more upgrades. Highly unlikely we're going to hit it. And we did not. So we're gonna head back out. And uh, this time we're just gonna buy a thousand and not mess around. Actually, let's buy 777. All right, and with that, we now have the donut maiden. That's what we need. So we're just gonna go on ahead and use that. And with enough time passed, we can also use that fully melted gelato as well. Okay, and that should finish up the continent of Eastern Lutera. As you can see here, we've gotten everything up to the 70% mark. Once again, just like every other area, uh, the rapport takes a very long time to build, especially so in East Lutera because we have eight characters which we need to hit trusted status with. That is quite literally going to take months. And of course, the collectibles you can get at any point in time when you just want to sit down and farm, farm, farm by just killing mobs over and over and over. Every single one of these is nothing more than an RNG drop from monsters in the zone. But we did get the most important thing, that skill point potion right here. And as you can see, I don't have the dungeons completed here. That's because three dungeons are not going to take me to 80%, and we did not need to go into the dungeons at all in order to complete everything else in the tome. At some point in time, when I'm closer to maxing out the rapport, I will go on ahead and get those dungeons. But there's really no need to do it right now, as everything else is strictly time-gated. Okay, and that concludes this portion of the Adventurer's Tome Guide. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss my guides and walkthroughs. And as always, if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below on what you would like me to create a guide for next. And until tomorrow, may you all enjoy your adventures in Arkesia.